Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. We were out on the lake last week, the electronics shut out, we weren't able to crank, we ended up having to jump off of the trolling motor battery and get ourselves off the lake. So, what does it mean when your battery isn't charging? Either your alternator in a car or your stator on a small engine like this is gone bad. So what I'm going to do today is run you through removal of an old stator and the installation of a new stator. Step one. It popped the hood. Pop the hood? Pop the hood. Step two, remove your flywheel cover. There's four plastic nuts. This is what they look like. Those are nuts. These nuts aren't nut nuts. Some of them can be kind of tight. So I like to take a pair of needle nose and kind of clamp it like that. Still be careful with it because they are plastic, but that's a good way to just break them loose. They're pretty tight for being plastic nuts. So once you have all four of those off, one, two, three, four, it just literally just slides right off. This is your flywheel. This is your stator, the red ring. We actually went with an aftermarket one and it came with a pretty awesome little instruction booklet and it even gives you a test to run through and make sure your stator is actually the problem because the only other thing it can be is your volt regulator. All right, folks, next step is there's a nut at the top of the flywheel with a washer below it. So you will need a 24 millimeter socket and I suggest an impact wrench because it's pretty hard to keep the flywheel still while running that big of a bolt off. You can do it by hand. It's not that easy as what you just saw. There's your nut. There's your washer. Take a pair of needle nose pliers. There's your nut and your washer. So, now you see down here, why is the inside of that lip threaded? Hmm. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you, this is not the first time we tried to remove this flywheel. And <laughs> by the searches of YouTube, this is a national struggle. So, me being a automotive technician, I see stuff like this and I'm thinking, factory tool. Well, guess what? There is a factory tool. And what this has, uh, this is basically, if you're familiar with any kind of pulley puller or a flywheel puller on vehicles or a, uh, like a hub puller or anything like that, this is kind of similar. This is going to depress the shaft in the middle. This is going to thread on those threads I showed you. So you just kind of thread this down and obviously that pushes the shaft up. That's what she said. I believe this is a 24 as well. It might be a 22. No, 22. I'm gonna run this down by hand. Swap out to the 22. Pew, pew. Moment of truth right here, y'all. There it went. Piece of cake. According to one of my mechanic buddies, there's could be, I forget the name of it. I'll look it up, put it right here. There could be a pin on the crankshaft itself. So we just need to watch and make sure that it doesn't fall out. And if it does, we put it back in before the flywheel goes back on. Oh, did I set it back on there? Okay. This pin right here. So ours stayed. Make sure that's in there. It doesn't matter if it falls out or not. If it does fall out, just put it back in before you put your flywheel back on. Because that also guides. There's a groove in your flywheel. That's what guides it on to make sure it goes in the right spot. <laughs> so we ended up going with an aftermarket stator from CDI Electronics, highly recommended. This is our little troubleshooting checklist. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test each yellow wire right here to our engine ground over here i'm assuming that these are our charging wires and that's why we got to test them and what we're testing for is no resistance at all if you have any kind of resistance from yellow to ground then the stator is bad so this is a voltmeter so what i'm doing is i'm stabbing this thing through the sheathing of the wire 
and then I'm coming over to the ground and I'm getting an ohm overload if you can see that so it's reading far too high and I'm gonna do the other one just for shits and gigs same thing all right so it's bad uh, 0 0.2 0.1 all right so we're at 0 0.1 and we should be at 0 0.4 between the two yellow yep going yellow to yellow so another indicator of a problem so we powered down the boat by disconnecting the battery now we're going to remove the stator and put on the new one the stator has four allen head bolts on the top of it holding it down it takes a 5 30 seconds allen wrench to get that out. Next operation is going to require some wire dikes. Hang on to that. All right, so anytime I'm doing electrical work, I like to work my way off as I work my way on, if that makes sense. So, green and white wire, old stator. green and white wire. New stator. I'm going to gradually work my way on and that helps you keep your wires correct and you never mix them up. Easy disconnect one. Yep. Good. Doesn't get much better than a no tools required wiring. All right, so now we're going white with green. All right, these a little bit further down. And it does not matter which yellow wire goes on which yellow wire. Old stator goes bye bye. There she is, y'all. Now we're going to reattach this as best to our ability how the factory had it. Now we're going to zip tie our wires back into the factory position as best we can. First one is going to go around this clip that holds all your connectors together. Sorry about the dogs. Next one is going to, I think the next one went right through here. Yep. But I honestly think that there was two, one around here and then one holding that to that. So I remember taking three or four off. I can't tell you who built the Eiffel Tower, but I know I took three zip ties off. And the reason you tie your wires back down, folks, is you don't want them rubbing.
All right, guys, I'm good with that. So now we're gonna bolt down our stator. And this kind of looks like a game of Russian roulette. Let's get them lined up. Yep. I think that's why hey. this is marked for uh, holes. Look at those guesses. <laughs> <laughs> About 30 seconds. Perfect spot for a time lapse. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of snugging them down. Then I'll put a little crank on them when I'm done. Kind of torquing them by a few. See that? That middle finger there is good for 45 foot pounds. Your finger game is strong. Finger game is strong. Look out. Now we're going to put back on the most difficult piece to get off. All right, so this groove here lines up with this pin up here on the crankshaft. And I kind of remember the numbers being towards facing me. So that's what I'm going to use to start. And you can pretty easily see where it needs to go. Seat right down? Yeah, drop right on. So now we're going to first our washer, followed by our nut. Taking our 24 socket. On a big expensive piece like this, always hand start your bolt before you get on it with the gun. You don't want to go ruining this thing. All right, I'm gonna hit it just one more time for good measure. I think she's pretty tight right there. All right, now we're gonna grab our flywheel cover. And these gnarly plastic nuts. They need nuts. Flywheel covers on. It's always a good point when you run out of parts to put back on at the end of a project. So I'm gonna grab the hood. We're, We're gonna set up our redneck pond. Give it a little test run. Yeah, go ahead and fire. Well folks, there goes the stator install. Get the factory tool. It will absolutely save your life. You won't break anything. You won't mess anything up. And obviously the only way to test this is to get it out on the water. Like I said, the only thing else this can be is the volt regulator, which at this point I highly doubt after doing all the testing we did. If you have any questions, comment below. We also have a fuel filter video. I'll link that in the description below on the same motor. And that really helped our idle at low RPMs. I recommend the factory tool highly. If you follow this step by step, you should be able to install a stator on your motor without any problem at all. So stay tuned by subscribing. And we've got a ton of fishing videos on the way for you guys. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. And as always, go after what you want and never quit, no matter how bad the motor runs.